Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I hope you're enjoying day two of TDX. I want to thank you all for showing up. I know there's a lot of exciting sessions happening. My name is Avantika Ramesh. I'm a product manager on our prompt builder team. I'm joined by my colleague Tian here to show you how you can create a co-pilot action using prompt templates. So with that, we're going to dive right in. As you know, we are presenting for looking functionality, so please be mindful of your purchasing decisions. But I do encourage you to take any pictures or screenshots if you'd like. And thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for taking the time and taking time to learn about Prompt Builder and Copilot with us. Now, I have a couple of questions to see if you all have been paying attention over the last two days at TDX. By a show of hands, who has seen Prompt Builder? OK, I'm glad that most of you have. Who has seen the Copilot? Yay, OK, we have a lot of people. That's amazing. Well, now that you all claim to have been seeing Prompt Builder and Copilot, I have another question. Who thinks the Prompt Builder can work with the Copilot? All right. Well, of course it can. They're both super well integrated. So if you think about a prompt, a prompt template, it's essentially an instruction that you're giving to a large language model with instructions and data. The Copilot, on the other hand, provides an intuitive conversational interface for you to interact with your data. And now if you bring the two together, you can think of a prompt template as just one of the many different actions that a Copilot is capable of. Now we're going to start by talking about prompt templates and kind of walk our way to the concept of the Copilot. When we think about a prompt, you essentially send an instruction to a large language model. But crafting a good prompt actually requires more than just the basic instruction. A lot of times, you need to give it context, right? You need to give it examples. You need to give it some tones and styles to mimic itself across. You also need to specify the format of the output, what you want the output to look like. You may even provide some policies to prevent the LLM from going haywire and hallucinating. And then there's also some selections you might make around a specific model for each use case that the prompt is powering. And finally, it's the data. The data is what matters. Now, I have kind of broken these down for you and defined them. I encourage you to take a picture of this. I don't want to read through all of it and bore you. But as you can see here, there's very different components to a prompt template to make it very effective for your different use cases. Now, if you think about writing a prompt, it does take quite a bit of work. If you have to recreate a prompt each time and craft all of these different components carefully each time. So how do you scale this? That's where prompt templates come in. And there's various use cases that you can achieve with prompt templates. If you think about content generation, it's great for marketing use cases. Let's say you want to create a press release or a blog. Even if you want to update text to match a specific style, or if you want to even create personalized emails or campaigns. Then we get into other use cases like summarization and information extraction that these prompt templates are really, really good at. So you can identify key insights from some data. You can summarize an account with a specific perspective. Or you can even extract keywords or specific search terms. So these large language models are highly powerful if you give the right instruction. And finally, you can even build or code with these. So you can actually generate outputs like JSON, XML, HTML to power all sorts of business logic. But then if you think about creating these prompts, it does take a lot of work to craft careful instructions, bring in the right data into these prompts, and figure out how you're going to use them. And that's why prompt engineering is typically very difficult to start with for businesses. First, you need to figure out how to bring in the right data effectively. You need to make sure that data is protected, so making sure it's not only securely accessed, but securely protected before it goes to a model. And finally, you want to be able to integrate these experiences. You don't want a siloed interface where people go and use the outputs and then have to come back, swivel their chair, and use the outputs. So that's where creating embedded experiences can be really effective. But if you have to do all of these on your own and build it from scratch, it takes time. So it begs the question, how do you build prompt templates for your business in a secure, simple, and scalable fashion? 
And that's where we have Prompt Builder. So our team is super happy to present Prompt Builder, which essentially provides you a very simple declarative interface for you to create reusable prompt templates and deploy them across your organization. As you know, our number one value is trust. So we make sure that you can actually leverage trusted generative AI with ease. Which, what that means is you can reference your data and feel confident that that data that you reference in your prompt template is always handled securely. You can also enrich your prompts with various types of data, whether it's from your CRM in the form of merge fields, whether you want to do conditional logic through a flow, or even if you want to bring in external data from MuleSoft or even Data Cloud. And finally, you can use these prompt templates to augment any of your business tasks. So these prompt templates are highly extensible, so you can invoke them from APIs, from flows and invocable actions, and from the copilot. So that's what makes them super flexible for various use cases like we have here, you know, standard sales templates, field generation templates, or even summaries of records. Now, to dive deeper into how we built this architecture and where it fills into the rest of our stack, I want to pass it over to Tian. Thank you so much, Avantika. All right, so I want to do two things. I'm going to quickly help you put prompt templates in the context of the rest of our AI stack. And then I'm going to jump into a demo, and I'm actually going to show you how you can use a prompt template and put it inside of Copilot. So what I want you to look at in this diagram is right there is Prompt Builder and the different kinds of prompt templates you can build. Um, it can be used to uh, customize the features that we're building out of, the, out of the box. It can be used to create custom flows. And it can be used in Copilot, which is what we're going to be talking about. But as you get started with, in, with AI in your company, prompt templates is actually a great place to start. And I'll show you why. It lets you create AI moments throughout your organization for leverage and then can be leveraged in all kinds of places. And you're actually investing in the future of, uh, with Copilot, building future Copilot actions. Um, you can pull in data from CRM, Data Cloud, you can use Flow, you can, all of this is running through the trust layer, you don't have to lift a finger to do that, it's all automatically built in if you use prompt templates. And then lastly, but definitely not least, is you can pick which, which model makes sense for each prompt template, which is incredibly powerful and really, really um, gives you, puts the power in your hands. But, it's a short session, so let's jump in and we're going to do a demo. If you want to get a little deeper into that, I do recommend the session in the corner um, at 2.30, where we get, it's called uh, um, Getting Started with Prompt Builder, and we're going to go way deeper in a, a lot of these different topics. Okay, so here's my contact. I've got a custom prompt template that I uh, hooked up here using a uh, screen flow. I'm on a contact, it knows that, so it's picking up that contact, it allows me to pick a product, and I can then generate a quick call to action, okay? Very custom use case. I don't want you to get hung up on the use case. I want you to imagine what you would want to build here. What is it that your users want to trigger on a uh, record that they can then use generative AI to generate some, some, something quick, okay? And great, here I have a um, great call to action that I can send to Leanne to actually encourage her to use our products. But if I go to Copilot and I say, I want to generate a call to action, It is going to tell me, let's see. It is not going to know how to do it. See, it's looking through all of its library of actions, and it's seeing if it has something, and it says, oh, uh, error card. All right, well, we can run it again. Live demos. All right, let's try it again. So it does not have an action available to generate a um, call to action. So what we're going to actually do is this prompt template that's running behind this button on this contact, I'm actually going to add it in Copilot. There you go. Unable to, um, rec you know, it, it basically don't, doesn't know how to solve my problem. So the, the prompt template I have is actually pretty straightforward. It is a flex template, which means you can pick what data is passed into it. In this case, I'm passing in a contact and a product. It's telling it, OK, I'm going to generate the short call to action for this product with this description to this contact, with this title, at this company, and it has a little bit more instructions as Avantika pointed out. I'm actually using GPT-4 for, for, to run it, and I can use this from anywhere, okay? I can use it from Flows, I can call it from Apex. Um, it is incredibly flexible in terms of where you can call it from. Any prompt templates, callables, invocable action, but we want to go to Copilot. 
So I'm going to go to Copilot. The inside of setup, you can actually go to uh, the Einstein Copilot Actions. I'm going to say New Copilot Action. The type of action I'm going to take is a prompt template. And when it actually uh, grabs my prompt templates, I can send see that same one, generate a quick call to action. Now, this is where if you're a nerd and you're filling in all of your descriptions in all of your different fields, you will be thrilled to know that it's actually valuable for real because that's how Copilot knows how to use it. It uses English to actually understand what a given action does, and that's what it uses to actually leverage it. In this case, I have to actually put in some instruction. I have to, be, because I didn't fill it in my prompt template, I actually put it in here, um, and I could explain that um, this will generate a quick call to action uh, for a contact for a particular product, et cetera. So I can describe what it does, and I can say, OK, um, a contact to send. And I can actually say, oh, and I have a product. The product to promote. And I can even say that I want to actually collect the product from the user. And then I can say, when I get response back, I'm going to show it in the conversation. Okay? So that's how you create the Copilot action. It's very simple. You actually just describe the different pieces and parts to it. Now, once that's created, I can actually go into Copilot. So I've got my Copilot down here, and I'm going to go into the builder experience. And I open it up in the Copilot builder. And what you're going to be able to see is in the Copilot action library, I've got this generate call to action right here. So what I'm going to do is going to deactivate my Copilot. I'm going to actually add my generate marketing call to action action to the Copilot. And I'm going to go test it. I'm going to say, generate me a call to action. And let's see if it picks it up. All right, and what you're going to see in the middle here is it's actually going to show us the plan. There we go. So it actually ran the plan here, and it picked it up, and it actually picked up the skill. Fabulous. So instead of showing it here, I'm going to show it to you in the end user experience. So I just activated that Copilot. It has that new skill in it now. Sometimes it takes a second for Copilot to update, so we'll see if it picks it up. I may have to refresh it once. Generate me a call to action for Leanne. And if it does the right thing, it's going to ask me to find a product that I want to promote. And once it prompts me for that, I will be able to, um, uh, nope, let's try it again. Actually, I'm going to reload. Let's make sure we get a, as I said, I've noticed sometimes when you activate Copilot, it just takes a second to deploy. So let's do that. Generate a call to action. And what it's going to do is it will actually prompt me to search for a product. Because it knows that I'm on Leanne's page. I'm on the contact page here. Um, there we go. It says, OK, by the way, Copilot is beta. So there's still some, some rough edges that the people are still working on. You'll notice the search is very generic right now. It doesn't actually tell you you're looking for a product. I've talked to the team. This is going to get more accurate. But it actually does work. So I'm going to search for a product. And it's going to just uh, do a search, it's going to find the right product. And then what you should see is it's going to generate that exact same call to action that was, there we go. There's my call to action. I even have a copy buffer, so I can actually copy and paste it, send it to Leanne. What's really cool, though, is um, because Copilot has context, it understands the conversation, I can say, ah, you know what? I didn't love that particular call to action. I can say, generate me another one. And Copilot is smart enough to say, OK, if I just want to generate another one, I'm probably going to use the same product. So it's just literally going to use the same data, the same context, and it's going to run it again. And we should get a new call to action that I can then look at. There we go. It, you'll notice it's different from the previous one. Explore the unique uh, profile. This one, discover the unique. So it's a completely different call to action with the same data. But let's say I said, ah, you know what? I'm going to promote a different product. And I say, um, uh, generate uh, it with a different product, right? If I can type. And 
So now you know it's not a recording. You can't do that many typos in the recording if you tried. Um, so what it's going to do now is it's going to understand that I'm actually trying to change one of my inputs into this prompt template. So it says, oh, you want a different one? I can say, all right, I want to search for some of our products. Um, there's a number of white chocolate products. There we go. Funny enough, it brought back a contact. We'll ignore that one. And there you go. There I can pick my product. And now it's going to actually generate a call to action with that product. All right. So Copilot's beta. You can learn with us. You can play with it. You can help us make it better. It is an incredibly powerful tool. It uses generative AI to actually build a plan to figure out how to chain actions together to ultimately solve the user's problem. And you, or the users ask, and you can actually build prompt templates today, deploy them in flows, deploy them in your UI, and any prompt template like this one that makes sense to be accessed, um, accessed and, and uh, discovered through Copilot, with a couple of clicks, you can add it as a Copilot action and instantly have that investment you already made available inside of Copilot. All right. So um, there is a bunch of features coming to Prompt Builder over the next couple of releases. In the summer, we're going to actually put a number of different things in around toxicity, screening, uh, template feedback is getting, getting further. Uh, data masking by field, um, fl flagging fields in your system. So if you have a field you know sensitive, it's not something generic that everybody thinks it's sensitive. You'll be able to do that. You'll be able to pass in, in uh, strings into prompt templates. There is an incredible amount of things coming to, with Prompt Builder. And all of these features is going to be able to be used through Copilot co as you're building prompt templates. Over the, next, uh, over the next couple of months. So you are investing in your future by building generative AI right now. If you have any questions, um, Mia and Avantika will be, we'll probably be able to take maybe one or two questions here. And then afterwards, um, I think Avantika can hang out for a little bit. I have to run, unfortunately. If you want to follow me, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, we have a deep problem builder deep dive session over on the side there where uh, there's a whole bunch of product managers you can also ask questions of. Thank you very much. Cool.